Today on Nation, we talk about the top five things to get yourself organized because it's spring now, gosh dang it. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Jersey here from WCR, Window Cleaning Resource, and of course, you're here. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, this is a weekly podcast on all of the podcast platforms, and we're on Spotify now because somehow I missed that one and we just got on there. If there is one that you're missing, you like to listen to, let us know. Um, <clears throat> we're also on YouTube. So watch the episode on YouTube. That's where the conversation is. And if you're on YouTube now, go ahead and, and say what's up. Say anything because it helps us, and I love to hear from you guys. And make sure to click that thumbs up if you're already on YouTube. Uh, hopefully you're out in the field making money and hopefully spring has hit for you. Um, but either way, uh, here you are. Uh, this week I want to give a couple quick, quick shout outs. First and foremost to Jai, what's going on, man? Uh, Michael Vedetti, uh, what's going on? Uh, Mike Rayner and uh, Mikey Windows from Connecticut, originally from the Bronx. He, he, he told me to say all of that stuff. So show's over. We have no more time, Mikey. You just, you, you used it all up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for uh, everything. Um, also, uh, I am a rep with Window Cleaning Resource and I want to be your sales rep. So if you haven't already, save my number. I'll wait a second. Get a pencil, paper. Got it? Nobody uses pencil anymore, so probably a pen. But it's 862 312 2026, that is my cell, so you can text me, call me, whatever. When you're ready to put an order in, let me do it for you. That is awesome. It's like a virtual high five, and then uh, you got a guy. Then you have your own personal rep here at Window Cleaning Resource, pressure washing, window cleaning, all the supplies. So, yeah, do it. Make my day. And as uh, Dave the Window Licker said, uh, buy me some corn dogs over the summer so uh real quick announcement too we have diego garcia if you don't know who he is you will soon he is going to be on the show uh, i believe next week as long as everything goes smoothly uh also i'll be on american window cleaner magazine um podcast here coming up shortly and uh we're also gonna have a tj on the show from outlaw window cleaner so watch yeah because it's cool and that's a thing to do Anyway, so let's get to it. This week, we're talking about top five ways to organize. And uh, this is a boring subject. It's always a boring subject. Organization is as fun to talk about as systems. It really is. But here's the thing. We all have only so much time in a day, right? That's the truth of the matter. And if you are not organized you're just missing out on on being productive. You know, I've had days, we've all had days where, you know, you get caught up in the, uh, you know, you watch something about, uh, oh man, I gotta, I gotta see how to uh, change an O-ring. You type it into YouTube, all of a sudden, two hours later, you've fallen down the hole and you're watching, you know, Star Wars trailers or something ridiculous, right? So having no structure or no way to organize or no plan it's just like anything, man. You're just you're just hoping that it all goes well. And because we are busy here, uh, spring seems to have come early. Hopefully you're out busy. Hopefully you're making money right now while you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, but um, if that's the case, you need to be more organized, right? Think about it. You could squeak out an extra hour of productivity without working an extra hour that is huge. It's 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 really, really an important thing to kind of do. And it's ever evolving. It's always changing is how to be organized. And probably the biggest question that I get is time management questions. By the way, if you have a question, shoot me an email. Jersey at windowcleaner.com or text me, call me, whatever. But I get a lot of them. I get a lot of questions on organization. And it's different for every person because here's the thing. Uh, I was not in the field I have not been in the field, I should say, for eight years, probably. It's been a long time since I've been like actively every day out in the field because I wanted to go the employee route. That's what I had. Uh, my job was office stuff and uh, keeping those guys busy. 
Um, and I don't know where your uh, role is. Maybe your main hat, the main thing that you do is you're out in the field every day cleaning. Awesome. Like you can't do anything wrong. Maybe you don't want to be out in the cleaning and that's why you're listening. That's cool too. Maybe you haven't been in the field as long as me. That's awesome. But each of you has a different um, kind of parameter, a different uh, need for organization because the guy who's out in the field doesn't have eight hours a day to be able to structure to, you know, doing other things in the office. It just doesn't happen. So he has a smaller window and has to prioritize a lot tighter than the guy whose job is eight hour plus in the office every day, right? So you have to tailor this. This is just me babbling. Like I always say, I don't know anything from anybody. I'm just a dude with a mic and, uh, you know, here's what we're talking about. But uh, so the number five thing that I say for uh, kind of organization, at least something to think about, is getting a shared calendar for everyone. Now, this is like dumb, right? You're like, well, that that didn't help me out. What's the next one? Fast forward. But listen, hear me out. Hear me out. So Google makes a shared calendar very simple, really, really simple. You can have your own personal calendar by the click of the button. You put it into the, uh, it all pulls up, but is also then in a shared calendar. Every single employee that you have gets on that shared calendar. And the reason they get on that shared calendar is because then they can tell you things that have to be done at the same time as you can and you're slotting your time. So even if, <clears throat> excuse me, down the road, we're going to talk about kind of uh, setting, you know, uh, your own appointments and things like that. But if, say, your lead tech says that uh, this person needs a call, you know, six months from now, or they want to call next weekend and they have a party and they want you to call on third, they can put it in the shared calendar and everybody sees it. And every single day, you can pull up that calendar and see it. Now, not only can they put stuff in there for you, messages and things that you have to do on certain dates doesn't get lost in translation because it's there but then everybody sees it so you're not double booking you know it's not like i got an appointment with that property manager at one but uh you know timmy just told me that i have to be to this one place he said i'd be there around one or i'd call around one or i'd do you know it doesn't end up uh, conflicting with each other the other part of that is that when you're putting down structure it is nice to have everybody's input and uh, you have to lay some guidelines because, um, you know, I don't do estimates in the field. I don't go there. Very, very seldom do I. So, um, you know, why would somebody put down, oh, Tanya told you to go give her an estimate on this day. That's not what I'm going to do, right? So you got to lay some ground rules. But having everybody on the same page, literally, <laughs> in a calendar is awesome. It's just, it's just awesome. I have one uh, calendar for my family, uh, right? You know, I have uh, it for my business. I have it for sales. I have it kind of for everything because I can always see what's going on and everybody has the input to do it. So it's just really, really good. And nothing gets lost when you have everything in a calendar like that. Um, it seems like such a little thing, but I'm telling you right now, it's so much better than getting a sheet of paper or one of your techs writing it down on the envelope and then you're throwing the envelope away because you didn't remember and then it doesn't get done or nobody knowing what's going on. It's just simple, it's quick, and you can get it on your phone. They can get it on their phone. It's simple, they can do it in the field. Go to Google Calendars and uh, uh, look it up. If you haven't done Google Calendars, super simple, nothing fancy, but it works really, really well. The other nice thing about that is involving your employees on another level. Now, this is for another episode in total, but letting them be able to kind of slate things too allows them to kind of understand that they're part of it, right? If you just let them be just an employee and they don't get to do anything and there's rooms they can't go in and they can't do that and they can't do that, they feel like garbage, they don't feel respected, and then you have a big problem. So doing that kind of just helps alleviate all of it. And it's simple and it's free, so do it. It's awesome. It, it really, really is. But the number four way to increase your organizational skills is to get a CRM. This also is another very, very big um, question that I get. A lot of calls, a lot of emails, all that kind of things asking me what I suggest. And that's awesome. The downside with it is, is that a CRM is specific 
to exactly how and what you need. There's a lot of different versions. The only way to find out which one you like is to try a lot of them. And there are quite a few of them out there. <clears throat> um, the one that I've been probably most impressed with is Customer Factor. It does so much and the integration seems pretty smooth. Um, it also seems to be, you know, continually upkept, if that makes sense. If you guys remember, there used to be a program called Georgian. I'm not hating on anything. Um, but uh, that program was like old school. And I haven't seen anything on it in a while. Maybe it's still there if it is common if you're watching on YouTube. But um, that program, the downside to it was it was as basic of a program as it could be. Now, in Customer Factor, uh, not everything is like super top-notch pro. That's one thing. I could say uh, if you're watching Customer Factor, update some of your stuff. It looks like it's from the 90s, like it's an Angel Fire stuff, some of it. But I don't care. I, it really doesn't bother me that much. Uh, but if I had to find a gripe, that's what it would be. But you can send proposals. They can accept proposals. You can do schedule. Everything that you need to do flawlessly with one program. And that, again, sounds weird. It's like, well, I'm going to pay for a program. I could do it for free. I got, I got index cards. No, you don't. You have a real business. It's time to get away from that and get into software. But you got to try different ones. There's a few different versions um, in a system like that. It may be just as simple as QuickBooks Online. We used QuickBooks Online for a very, very long time. And the reason was is because we had uh, office staff and the office staff, uh, we could put things everywhere that we needed to between a calendar program and the QuickBooks. Uh, it was a little less efficient, but um, it was kind of easier for us. But I wouldn't have found that out unless I tried everything, right? Um, if you're going away from that, trying to get yourself organized, then that's when the CRM comes into play. But the only way to find out what works for you is to use it. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones. And if you know them, comment uh, again on YouTube. Uh, start a thread. Uh, tag me uh, on Facebook and on any of the forum groups. Uh, and let me know what all the other ones are that you really like. Um, but uh, try them. A lot of CRMs have a, um, a free trial subscription-y type thing that you can try. Uh, the downside to that is that you're porting in customers. Uh, even if you have 50 customers ported in, you know, by the time your trial ends or whatever, now you have to then cross-port all those 50 in from that program to the new program when you try it. So it is a little bit cumbersome going through the process of trying all the stuff. But like I said, like you could find a good CRM and use that forever. So it's worth, you know, spending, you know, uh, a couple hours of headaches, you know, doing your porting and getting stuff over. You don't have to put everything in there right at once until you actually get the subscription and go, okay, this is mine. This is what I want to do. But the other thing I really like about um, Customer Factor, just to throw this out there, is uh, the specifics in the quotations. Um, so something to look at. Again, if that's something that you're going, like we talked about uh, last week with uh, adding value, the more documents and things you give them, the more uh, it seems like you're on the ball, even if we're not sometimes. And that's the same thing with organization. Like with organization, you could be so, you could change a, you know, 20 minute process per customer into a one or two minute process. Like, think about that stupid little change. Now you freed up 18 minutes per customer. That's huge. Like what do you do with 18 other minutes? If you're working efficiently, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. So it's something to think about, but you got to do the free trials. Check them all out. I have none that uh, we're affiliated with, so I'm not going to plug any names at all, but they are uh, really pretty interesting, the new ones that are coming out. Uh, different ones do different things. There's also one that we've seen a lot about on the, um, I can't remember now the last one. Uh, I've not actually played with the program, but I've watched demos on it, and it looks pretty good, but they're in like HVAC stuff now, um, so they're kind of coming over. So interesting, just either way, that's a big one. Uh, see what's out there, check and, and see what works for you. Uh, but the number three way to organize in uh, my head <clears throat> is a marketing calendar. And uh, if there was a dead horse to beat, this would be one of them. We've talked about this before in planning for spring. You should have already set one up, um, in my opinion. You can't do anything wrong if you didn't. It's no big deal. 
But uh, if you were going to set one up, you should have already set it up earlier in winter when you were twiddling your thumbs. Uh, and a marketing calendar is one of the most important things to alleviate the stress of thought in the marketing process. You can do it for an entire year. Now, the big thing with it is that the spring can happen sooner or later than you think. And the initial one is a little bit tricky. And that's when I say stuff is always moving. But if you say, hey, this year I want to do 2% of my gross in advertising, right? 1%, whatever your thing is, 10%, doesn't matter. But we'll say for even numbers, you know, you want to do 1% of your $100,000. Now you know that there's this amount you're going to be spending because that's your projection. This is what you're spending for the entire year. Let's break it up. What are we going to advertise in, uh, you know, uh, middle of July? No. <clears throat> okay, cool. We know that. Take it off. We have two seasons, spring and fall. We got to push hard in both of them. We're not going to advertise in summer. We're not going to advertise in winter. Take those off the table. Now, what months are summer and fall? Let's say spring, um, uh, spring and fall. Spring is uh, three months. Fall is two months, we'll say. That's five months. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to spend all of that money, that one, two, five, ten percent of gross in now five total months. Let's break it down. How many weeks is in those are in uh, the f total of five uh, months? Okay, so let's do X amount per week to get to that goal. Now, what are we gonna do with that marketing? Like, we're gonna do ad clicks and we're gonna set it on week one through three. We're gonna do ad clicks uh, spend at this, you know, but we're also gonna do EDDM at this. Plus, we're gonna do door hanger. You could market everything and get that all down to a T. Now, the first day, it may be, you know, April 1st. But your spring may not actually come until April 15th. So that's where you start moving things around to get it to work because there's nothing worse than wasting advertising dollars before the thing really cracking. Now, you can send, especially with um, uh, paper clicks, like if no one's clicking, cool. But people may be clicking because they're interested, but they're not buying. So you kind of have to deal with that time. But that's where you move it. Once it starts, you're like, we're in spring, let's do it. Like we are now, meaning the country itself. Um now it's time to pull the trigger. Now you have everything laid out. The plan starts. You know everything that you need to know. There's no question. And you did it all once you spent an hour. <clears throat> excuse me. Jeez. You spent an hour putting it all together. And uh, you don't have to worry about it again. But you also don't have to worry about if you're over or under or, oh, man, I don't even know what I spent. I don't even know what I, maybe you want to increase it halfway through. You, Man, we are slated now to make you know, uh, 120,000 this year. We're slated to make 150,000. Whatever your increase is of what over what you thought you were going to be, you can then now tailor everything from there. The other nice thing is in print, print is cheaper when you buy it in bulk. So the more pieces you can print, even if you don't send them out, because obviously, you know, hopefully you've done your split testing already. If you haven't split test everything you possibly can. But uh, before all that goes out, you can then print, say, uh, you know, 50,000 pieces at once instead of printing 1,000 at a time. You're going to save money. You're going to have it all there. And either come in on the weekends, if you have somebody on the office, if you have kids or whatever, now you can batch it. Put it all, if you're doing EDDM, you're putting it all in 50s or 100 bundles, putting it all in some flats, getting it all ready. All you have to do is print the cover sheets when you're ready. Now it's just so simple that you look up Monday, you get in the office, you're looking up, oh, hey, it looks like this week we're putting out, uh, you know, 20,000 pieces, whatever the number is. Don't let that discourage you. Uh, we're putting out a thousand pieces, right? Awesome. So as soon as the guys get all going, then I'm going to get that all out to the um, thing. That's what we're doing this week. There's no questioning it because you questioned it when you looked at all of it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Boom. Like, you know, by, by Monday afternoon, if that's your, your, your day, you could have your AdWords set up. You could have your uh, mail out and ready to be distributed. You could have all that done by Monday. Now the rest of the week, your advertisings are just going, right? Maybe you're doing, uh, you're sending a batch out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Cool. Well, okay, it's Monday. I'm going to prep everything, print the packing slips for those days, have it ready. Boom. When Wednesday comes in, you already knew what's happening. Oh, it's Wednesday. This batch has got to go out and run it to the post office. Now, 15 minutes later, you're back and your, your marketing is already done. You've taken, you've thought once to save thinking every day. That's where you save efficiency.
these are, you know, and you could do that with the marketing calendar. You can do that with, uh, you know, uh, advertising or not advertising, a sales. If you're doing all the sales yourself, you can do that with anything. But if it's like that, you can structure it and you can drop that and overlay it on everything else that you're doing so you know that you're working the most efficiently. Work smarter, not harder, right? The number two way that uh, I would think in the ways to organize yourself <clears throat> is, sorry if this is gargly, by the way. I am not uh, sick, but uh, our pollen is here. Maybe that's kicking in, so sorry in advance. Anyway, uh, number two ways uh, to organize is uh, get into automated sales. Now, that does not mean, and some people do, but I don't think so. I don't think it should mean you go 100% and all you focus on is the automated sales and you just don't do sales yourself because guess what? I love route. There, I said it. Hi, my name is Jersey and I love route. Maybe you love route too, maybe you hate it, but route in a cold area, route for frequency is killer. So with route, these kind of things don't work really well. It's really door to door, face to face with route. Anyway, so what I'm talking about in automated sales is like Responsibid, one of my favorite programs of all time, right? And some people consider it a CRM and you can use it that way. Uh, for follow-ups and calls and running everybody through and keeping your stuff. That's awesome. I don't run it that way. But uh, Responsibid is a bidding software you put on your website. If you don't have a website, that should be your absolute main focus right now. Like you should stop buying um, Starbucks coffee and get a website because websites are amazing. It's always selling for you. Anyway. Throw a response a bit on there. If anybody, if I remember, I'll throw it on the YouTube video too. We, we have a code uh, that you can try it with a discount. That's besides the point. But response a bit itself is such an amazing software. When you put that on your site and people say, click now for an instant quote, you could throw buttons on anywhere. You could throw it on a page. You could do anything. Everything pushes those people to that like a funnel if you haven't heard of sales funnels. When they click that and they enter their information just to check a price, now you have the information. It saves it. It sends it to you. So even if somebody doesn't say, you know, sold or Mrs. Jones wants to book or Mrs. Jones did book, um, then you can call Mrs. Jones and say, hey, it's Jersey calling from XYZ and I just noticed that you had looking for prices. Was there any other questions you had? And people, I'm telling you, if you call them, you will get an extra, and I do it fast. When it comes in, I get that quote, it's checking for a quote. I call them within five minutes, just like a service uh, home advisor, that kind of thing. Service magic, that was old. Uh, but uh, when you call and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, it's Jersey calling from XYZ. We noticed you had just uh, looked for pricing, and I just wanted to know if there was any other questions that I could help with. Now you have that personal touch, and I'm telling you, out of those people who don't book automatically, uh, I probably closed another at least 50% over the phone when I call right away. Like, oh, hey, yeah, you know what? Uh, we're just looking at pricing and, you know, uh, how, how, whatever dumb question. Is that is that you clean glass for that, you know? Because people are just thinking they just want to throw stuff out. Yeah, absolutely. You remember our, our bid always includes this, 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 and this. And I looked over your bid and uh, the numbers are, are good. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like anything was too out of skewed. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to check if you had any questions. People, oh, yeah, yeah, well, let's go with it. Let's get it booked. Oh, great. Well, hey, uh, let me get the calendar and pull you up, right? Boom, it's booked. But it's Amazon. What, what was the last? I just bought Amazon actually this morning. This morning I bought stuff from Amazon. And uh, who did I talk to? I don't know. Who did you buy from? Uh, Amazon? No, you didn't. You bought from a company. But they shipped your Amazon. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, who's your rep over there? Uh, I don't know. You know, when, when people say, no, automated sales doesn't work for me. Uh, people need to talk to me. My customers are different. You're wrong. You are so wrong uh, that I would challenge you to that because you're wrong. Uh, people buy on Amazon. They buy on eBay. Uh, they buy uh, through all of those things online. You can go to any th single store that you walk into. Go to Kohl's department store. Go to Walmart. You know you can shop Walmart online? You don't have to go in. You don't have to deal with the Walmart people. You could just shop online. You know? Then it's a whole other world. People are used to that. And it's the same thing with services. It's getting into that. I'm telling you, I promise. You can alleviate 
And that doesn't mean take it all out because people are still going to want to talk to a human. Awesome, you're there for that. People are still going to want to verify things. Awesome, you're there for that. People still need to be pushed over the edge to make the decision that's right for them. You're there for that. And that's really what that is. That's first. Responsibid, awesome, 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 awesome software. Uh, Kurt's an awesome guy, but uh, I have had more people in that Responsibid come in at just the craziest times. When tire kickers come in, it's in their brain. You capture them when it's in their brain. That's the big part. The window cleaning is not always in people's brains like it is in ours. When it's in their brain, you get the info captured. Another one is Send Jim. Send Jim is uh, awesome. Uh, the stuff that that program can do for sales is just ridiculous. You could pick an address, say, hey, we did uh, Mrs. Jones' house at 123 Apple Street. Uh, I like that area. That's a really nice area. You can go in their maps, type in her address, and draw a circle around everybody around there and send them all flyers pictures you could send them all three things to come out once a week to get sent to them you could send them all cookies if you want you could send them brownies you can send mrs jones a thank you note somebody you know uh gives you a referral that means they love you and they're telling their neighbors you find their address they gave you a referral you send them a brownie but you also bomb their neighborhood because they've already been talking about you if you got a referral from them like that kind of stuff is incredible is incredible when it comes to automating your sales that doesn't mean that that's all going to do but you're you're making a presence and you're out there you're doing all that with ease and you're doing it super super quick flyering is cool i like flyering but flyering takes time you have time or money if you're trying to fix your time make yourself more efficient that's the stuff you do you can click one click of a button and in five minutes five minutes you can have your entire marketing done for the month if you needed like there's the, the follow-up is huge. You will always get more in a follow-up. That's why I need EDM. You send one piece, that's kind of cool. You send two pieces, you know, one another week later, you're going to get better response. You send three, you're going to get even better response. That's how direct mail works. That's how everything works. You have to touch. People for the first time when they see something, go, ah, no, 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 don't know enough about it. That's subliminally. Even if they don't say it, they don't know enough about it, right? You have to continue to touch them. And uh, that's what those programs do. Really, look it up if you haven't. If you're bored uh, at night, in the day, send Jim. Uh, that's Josh Latimer, actually. So you guys probably all know about Josh. And uh, Responsibit, and I'll put the Responsibit code, uh, discount code we have down here. Uh, it was actually, we did uh, a Nation episode with him way back. And he gave us his code. He's like, oh, yeah, if anybody's interested, after we're done talking, give him the code. It'll save him some money. And I just asked him a little bit ago. And he says, yeah, it's still good. So we'll put that up. Um, but look into those automated sales, kill it. But the number one thing that I, the person who uh, knows no more than you, just to do with the mic, thinks is a great way to organize is to plan your day in writing. This is another hard one that's always changing, but here's the thing. Structure your day. You, none of us work eight hours on a typical day, right? Because people come in, we ends up being more like 10 or whatever, but structure an eight hour day. What happens? Every say 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you want to structure, right? Here's how my day starts. I get in at 8.30, and um, actually it's usually closer to 8, um, but uh, with drive it's actually 8.12 if you care. But um, uh, with that, at 8.30 everybody starts showing up. And from 8.30 to 9, we prep the guys, make sure they have all what we call the Bibles, they have the books, they have all the, the stuffed envelopes, the calendar, the everything. They get that. They know what they're doing that day. They got all their supplies. How are we doing on supplies? Good. Yeah, we need this. Let's get this loaded up. Cool, cool, cool. High five. Let's see you guys later. Boom. By 9 o'clock, everybody's been on the road. So 9 o'clock is where that next one. I've structured that. 8.30 is uh, crew prep. 9 o'clock starts follow-ups. Uh, for me is going through emails, right? If there's any messages we got overnight or anything like that, I do that all right away from 9 to 9.30. That's kind of how I'm structuring things in those blocks because I know if I don't do that, I'm going to start doing other things and I'm not going to realize where I can put meetings or where I could do different things. And I know when people go, oh, yeah, I'd like to meet with you next week. What's a good time for you? I can know my calendar and go, hey, you know what? Usually I block out something uh, around a 12 to 1 area for uh, meetings slash lunches and things because um, that's cool. It's what I want to do. I don't care. Uh, so I'll be like, oh, what about uh, 12 o'clock on that one? You want to meet for lunch? we got a place. I 
do a bunch of prep. I go to the same place all the time. Um, we do windows for food, so it's free food all the time. So uh, that's how we structure things. And if you put it down day by day, you know where you are, what you're doing, when you're doing it, and you can continue to fill that day up. If you don't know that from 9 to 9.30, by 9.30, you need to have your follow-ups done, maybe you get off to a tangent. Maybe you're doing stuff and then you look at the clock, oh man, I got like 10 more minutes before uh, 9.30, let me just jump on that real quick and just power it out. Boom, back on schedule. Slating what you're doing when you're doing and how you're doing it. No matter if it's marketing, if it's sales, if it's uh, you know calendar with your guy, if any of those things will help your productivity. And it makes you better because you can get done 20 hours worth of stuff in eight hours. And it's not that you're working harder, it's just that you're taking up all the dumb little things throughout the day that ruin your productivity and it puts it there. The other thing is when you have structure, it is a lot harder to break a structure. Once it's happened, once it's happened, once it's embedded in you, if you get in a funk, if you don't have structure, you're like, oh, what am I doing today? I don't know. I'm just going to I'm going to do this. Uh, maybe I'll go to Sam's Club or I got to go shop for some supplies to the shop or uh, maybe I'll do some internet shopping. Like if you don't know and you're not feeling it, it's very easy to stay sidetracked. But if you're always on that, it's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym every single day at the same exact time, then guess what? If you go there at the same exact time after say 6 months of doing that, it's your thing. And you don't even think about it. It's just what you do. You know what you're doing. That's structured time. Structuring time makes you more productive. Weird way to say, say that. I sound super Canadian when I say, uh, like, uh, product, whatever. Anyway, whatever. I'm not from Canada, okay? I didn't know I had an accent until I moved down south where people from Long Island all told me that I have an accent, which is very ironic. But anyway, thanks for listening. A uh, little ramble at the end, but uh, thanks. Really, guys, you know, if you're listening still, uh, the downloads um, on the podcast have just blown up. Blown up. You guys are killing it. Uh, I don't know if it's people sharing it. Uh, I don't know if people are just recommending it or what's happened, but uh, I really genuinely appreciate it. If you haven't shared it, share it. Uh, let people know. If you've got other people, buddies in the business, tell them about it. Uh, it's super, super awesome. Here's the thing. <clears throat> if you're still listening right now and you want to order, let me know. Call me up. 862-312-2026. You can call or text me that. Put it all in your cart and then text me that. But then I'm going to give you a code right now. Um, and uh, the code is, I'm not from Canada A. You got to tell me that. Tell me you're not from Canada, and uh, I will I will give you 5% off your order. But listen, only if you order through me. If you go on the website and you're like, hey, I didn't see a place to put that, you can't put it anywhere. You have to order it through me. You have to. So order it to me. Yeah. 862-312-2026. Thanks for watching, and uh, go out there, and until next week, be epic.